So back in January of this year, I made a video, will we see a Raspberry Pi 4 in 2019? And guess what? As you know from my video earlier today, yes, the rumors are true. The Raspberry Pi released it um, last night at midnight and everyone is excited and they really blew, I think, everyone's mind as far as the type of upgrade we got, especially when we saw uh, what we would get from the Raspberry 3B Plus from the 3B. And so here we go. We have a brand new architecture here on the CPU. We have more RAM, uh, gigabit Ethernet, uh, 4K dual display, more power. So a lot of really great updates and in this video i want to do two three things number one is i want to talk about my previous video and is the raspberry pi foundation actually listening because this is fascinating everyone always to my last video was like no they're a you know a tinkering company they're not going to do it also the, the, some people were calling me you know an idiot i didn't know what i was talking about there's no way they're going to release you could read these comments people were telling me how wrong i was it's not going to happen they're not they're not for performance you know, you had all sorts of things. They also said it was already confirmed that they're not going to do it. You're, you're just clickbaiting us. Well, guess what? We did see one in 2019, so who's laughing now? But anyways, <laughs> besides that, I want to talk about some sales trends I'm noticing already on these kits. And I also want to get you guys prepared. For those of you that are waiting for it, anticipating it, some uh, things to think about for your thing. So stay tuned. All right, so my first point, as I mentioned, which is, you know, I wanted to see a Raspberry 4 and a Raspberry Pi 4. I thought it would be like a Model C or something like that, but they are going to keep it on the Model B lineup. So now we have some more history here of how they are releasing and what years they're releasing it at. Something I didn't mention in my old video is they still are producing the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, and then they said they're going to be producing the Model B Plus till like 2022 or so. And then we have the Model A, we still have the Zero. So they're still producing a ton, a ton of boards. But what I want to say is maybe they are listening to us maybe they're listening to all the comments some things I've noticed number one is they gave this kit if you look on YouTube there's already people like explaining computers who have received these early units and so what that shows me is they do want to promote they do want to market their products and sell a ton so that's number one that's great number two is they really did jump the horse here they under promised and over delivered we didn't think we we're going to get one in 2019 they were saying it's a three-year iteration and yet we got one within a year so all that makes me think that they are listening to us and the louder we are the more we're going to see things now something that i've just been mulling in my head that's very fascinating is just like my last video the one thing that is constant with raspberry pis besides the size, well, for the most part, for the Model B series, the size, is the price. Uh, 25, oh, I guess you had a 25 there, but it's usually under $40, right? And this is the first time where we see Raspberry Pi breaking out into higher dollar amounts. And what that tells me is a they're listening because here we are we have a four gigabyte version you would have we would no one would have predicted that you know people would have wished it but a lot of people were not predicting this um, especially with ram prices ram is not cheap it's one of the more expensive components on the board so that is amazing but what can they do with this now because we now kind of are okay maybe they are listening to us we're thinking about this now they they are listening but what does this tell us well i can already tell you when you go to canakit and i want to go order mine you can see that you can order a Pi for one gigabyte for 35, 40, but you'll notice here pre-order ship July 9th, August 1st. You go to the two gigabyte, you got some delays here. They must be out of 32 gigabyte cards or something. But when you go to the four gig, they don't even have the boards available. It says August 1st. But here's the thing. I was on this website about three or four hours ago ordering mine, and it said something like July 9th here. So that means they delayed it till July 20th. And then they got more orders in then went to August 1st. So what does this tell me? That people who are ordering this Raspberry Pi model model 4, 4B are ordering the 4 gigabyte model because that's the one they're selling out of. Maybe they didn't order as much of these because they were higher cost. But as we see, now it's August 1st. So that means they have a huge demand for this product, right? We already know this within hours of the release that this is a huge demand for the highest performing model that they're selling. So what this tells me and why I made this video is Raspberry Pi Foundation, if you're listening, you have this huge demand for the most um, spec'd out boards you produce. 
So what does that tell you, Raspberry Pi Foundation? That yes, I understand your core is to teach and get people tinkering and things like that. But if you wanna make money and support those types of causes, you see here that your company has a huge potential to produce high performing boards as well. So why won't you just do that? Produce high performing boards, sell them to these people that want it, and then if you still wanna make $5 boards, $10 boards that are less powerful, do that in addition to, and have a well-oiled machine here where you're, produ you're, you know, you're just gonna make more revenue at the end of the day. So I thought that was very fascinating because to me, this is evidence that we are willing as a customer base, especially in the US, right? Because this is US, Connecticut, they're sh shipping to the US Canada market primarily um, in this particular uh, website here, um, that we want more power and, and we're willing to pay for it. So I hope they look at this information, they see the sales numbers because here's the thing, they weren't really able to compare apples to apples. You can't compare a Raspberry Pi W to a Raspberry Pi A to a B. They're just too different. It's no, we're not just talking performance here. We're talking other features, other um, extensions and add-ons. But now you have the same board with three variants. And the only thing that changes on these variants is the RAM. So if you're in the marketing or you're even looking at sales numbers and you seeing that you're selling the four gigabyte version four to one for every, you sell four of these to every one of these, then, that ha then they should be paying attention, listening, and go ahead and use that as data to show you that we want more powerful Raspberry Pi 4s. So that's, my, that's all my little high horse here of what I think we can all get out of it. Okay, um, a couple things I wanna clarify from my last video is yes, this architecture is different. Um, maybe some images, we're gonna see whether old images work or not. I wanna clarify that, we're gonna check it out. Number two is the architecture is different. So just because it's a 0.1 gigahertz increase, that doesn't mean a lot. The whole architecture is changing, so it's gonna be more efficient, it's gonna consume less power. It will be a lot more powerful than just a, if you were to do it in percentages, it's not gonna be a 5% increase. It's gonna be significant increase, so, you know, 40% increase or so. Again, we'll wait until we see some benchmarks on that, but it is going to be a lot more powerful with this architecture, it's not just one point a hundred megahertz faster okay uh, furthermore what I want to talk about is for those of you wanting to buy the basic kit it's an extra fifteen dollars just for the what do you get you get the heat sinks and the power kit I just want to let you know is that with the with, no with the power I already have this panda thing I have a bunch of these they're already um, five volt three amps so these should work on the new one all you would need to do is get one of these little adapters or like a dollar or two um, the reason I know this is I have a Samsung phone and when I went to my latest Samsung it upgraded to USB type C but I already had a ton of these uh, micro USB cables around my house. I was like, so I have to buy all new cables. So rather than buying the cables, all you gotta do is buy the adapter. So if you already have a three amp, make sure you get three amp. It can't be the 2.5, which is um, what a lot of those out there are, but get three amp and you can go ahead and use these. The other thing that people mentioned to me is, hey, you can get a cable, an HDMI cable, because in the last video I said you need dongles. No, you're absolutely right, you can get a direct cable. Um, but my point was that I don't have one of these cables sitting around my house because I don't have many devices that use the the mini or micro HDMI. Um, so you can also get a dongle as well. So there are dongles, there are adapters. So you have a choice between the two. What all I was saying was I have a bunch of HDMI to HDMI mail cables sitting around. I don't have a lot of the uh, micros around. Um, so keep that in mind. I'll put links to those if you want to get ready for it. Um, as far as cases too, I've been thinking more about that. You might be able to still use some of the older cases like the Nest Pi case and things like that where the Pi is internally into the into the unit and you can move some uh, components around. Uh, but I want to get mine. We'll see what we could do. You might be able to kind of fit things around, but we will be seeing new kits on that. So anyways, that's what I think. Awesome, to summarize, awesome to see the Raspberry Pi Foundation listening and making this. Um, it, it was a big upgrade. For those of you that are downgrading it or meh, you know, it is somewhat significant, so really cool there. Um, and then lastly, a couple things as far as saving you guys some money because, for example, I bought this from Canakit. First of all, their shipping is way too high, Canakit, by the way, for this little board. They were charging me like $14, are you joking? Anyways, but all that aside, you kind of got to pay if you want it sooner. Um, and then we should be seeing these on Amazon and stuff after the fact. So exciting times. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.